Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network, heard across the USA and on your favorite podcast channel. And I have the honor and privilege today to speak with Mr. Kendall Clark Baker, a resident at Skyline Community, our retirement community, up on First Hill in downtown Seattle, phenomenal with things around you. And Kendall, welcome back to Answers for Elders. So, Kendall, I want to ask you some questions. You moved in with your wife in 2004. Is that no? You but you moved in the community in, in the, 2009, in the right? In the skyline, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, tell me a little bit about what it was like for the two of you to move in. What was it? What is it like for couples to move in to a retirement community? Well, I speak as, as one of a, of a couple, um, but I think everything I'd have to say about that could also be applied to someone moving as a single, and there are many, many people okay. in a single. Awesome. So I don't know that it's uh, specifically related to being a couple, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, the, the the primary the primary uh, benefit really is are the relationships with new friends. Yeah. Uh, I re- I really think that's that's the core. Mm-hmm. is that you that one is part of a genuine community mm-hmm. and of mostly for us for everybody of new friends yeah these friends become a, a lifeline mm-hmm. um that we that we share life with i think sometimes sure. people travel sometimes people go to the arts performing arts events mm-hmm. with one another, but um who are there for us when uh life situations come along mm-hmm. and are challenging and, uh, um, and, and are supportive. It's a supportive community. Yeah. I was also impressed when I was there at Skyline at the diversity there. Um, I, I was fascinated as, as other cultures were being honored. Uh, there is so much in the way of diversity and, and, and I find that unusual in senior living. When you say diversity, you're talking about racial, ethnic, and, yeah, everything. I, you know, religious, uh, racial, everything. I, I mean, I was very impressed with that. You know, the the honoring of the different um, holidays, the different types of diversity that goes on. Um, I was very intrigued and very impressed. We're very diverse, um, uh, religiously, and mm-hmm. including non non religion. So there's. Uh-huh. there's there's an opportunity to to share life with each other, but but uh, out of a total sense of freedom, and even people who don't relate at all to mm-hmm. religious, uh, institutions are yeah. present and, and and welcome. Um, you say diversity. We're we're, we're we are pre- predominantly, um, I'd say, uh, Northern European. Uh, you know, uh-huh. here a significant a significant population of. Um, of uh, Southeast Asian, um, or yeah. orig- originally Southeast Asian ethnic background people. Um, there have been, and but there are very few African Americans uh, mm-hmm. uh, here in the community at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, we're we're not diverse economically, right? I, I say that because uh, you know, but but. T- a community like this uh, 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 does uh, uh, you pay uh, mm-hmm. a level of services and right. so economically? It's probably a fairly stratified uh, mm-hmm. environment. We're mm-hmm. also we're also very uh, very diverse in uh, in gender and mm-hmm. in uh, uh, in and in, including uh, 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 gay and lesbian uh, mm-hmm. couples and singles. Uh, so there, there is a is a very diverse and welcoming community. Yeah, there. and I think that that's so important. It's the welcoming inclusiveness of that community that you don't see often. Um, and I am very impressed at when I went in when I was there. It was during Hanukkah, and you had menorahs all over the place, which I was amazed. You don't see that normally. And then I was told that you guys have such an, a huge Jewish population, which, you know, you don't think about that. But if you're Jewish, you want to be around people that are part of your culture. You want to celebrate those 
those, you know, those cultural things. Um, and I know that I'm sure every time a year, there's all kinds of, you know, attention to different forms of celebrations, uh, re you know, reflectiveness, et cetera. Well, yeah. So yeah. tell me, go ahead. So Kendall, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell me about, um, given that you're downtown, I would love for to have you just expand on the location. You know, it's so easy to get to things, but what's close to you? Well, what's close? Um, I'm looking right now at the window at the uh -huh. at the Catholic Cathedral for the Archdiocese. Yes. Two, yes. yes. And for those who are Catholics in the community, that's that's a real pull because they just absolutely. But it's also your floor to ceiling windows, by the way, which are phenomenal. Well, is this okay if I just do this? Yes, you can. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm... look at that. Isn't but that this, beautiful? This is what I'm looking at. And we even have beautiful clouds and uh, a little bit of blue sky today, too. Amazing. It's so, amazing. Um, uh, but the church is also a cultural center. So they, they mm -hmm. do programs that yeah. are, and music programs. It's an outstanding uh -huh. music program at the cathedral. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just thinking of, we we live we're just around, some of those buildings that you would have seen as I turned mm -hmm. the camera around are medical centers. So we we have three medical centers within blocks of each other, each mm -hmm. direction, which means that uh, it, we're just filled. Literal the response time, of course, is very yeah. very short in case of an emergency. But we um, it just filled with uh, clinics and physicians and medical uh, services uh, that are mm -hmm. easy walking distance. Mm -hmm. uh, the library, the the beautiful public library, is just four blocks away. That I walk incredible frequently. Uh, Benaroya Hall, where the symphony um, mm -hmm. and chamber music program is held, that's within walking distance. Uh, it's incredible. Seattle, Seattle Art Museum, Act Theater, which is mm -hmm. in the convention center. Sure. These are all within walking distance, and go, then the, going up to the Seattle <laughs> Center, I usually personally take the bus, mm -hmm. or sometimes walk downtown and get on the monorail and take that up uh, to the uh, to the center. Uh, so public transportation is another really uh, strong asset for. Mm -hmm. For, for absolutely me, absolutely in a downtown situation yeah and you ha even have a performance hall in your olympic tower that you have I, I mean that to me blew me away <laughs> oh the the, the 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 olympic tower we, uh -huh. we have two two it's all one campus but the olympic mm -hmm. tower is newly built and just across uh, mm -hmm. the avenue from uh, the building from that i live in and there is this performing arts center, and there's just always are programs going on, and they're just such quality. Yeah. Programs. So there's a uh, every every week there are two or three. Some of them are generated. Well, they're all generated internally in terms mm -hmm. of bringing people in from outside. Mm -hmm. but some of the programs are featuring people uh, like our. We have a Skyline Corral that I sing in. We oh, wonderful! A concert last week, and. Uh, and the audience, it was packed. The uh, theater was just packed. And it was so wonderful to be able to perform to our fellow residents. That is so amazing. And obviously, you have an own your own personal story that evolved by being in at Skyline. And that is your wife. And I know that you walked in, uh, moved in before she started getting ill. Would you explain a little bit about your background with your wife? Well, so Sonia is... Um, she uh, she was a uh, real mover and shaker and in fact she had a, a master's degree in urban planning so this was wow. uh, in many many ways was uh, uh she was leading in uh, some of our decisions to uh, mm -hmm. move here and um so she was very active in uh, especially in starting the environmental services um uh, committee uh, wow. uh, and uh and she promoted the recycling, really developed and promoted the, the recycling program so much so that that she was uh, nicknamed uh, Garbage Guru. And, <laughs> I love that. And she and she arranged field trips down to the recycling center for the community, and uh, uh, so anyway, Sonia was very involved, and also in our resident council that we elect to. Uh, it's called the Skyline Residents Association. She was on the executive committee of that too. And, well, she, um, about uh, uh, two and a half years ago, 
she uh, her health began to deteriorate mm -hmm. and it was a neurological disease and it ended up uh, she went through a number of different diagnoses and it ended up as uh, as Lewy bodies uh, Parkinson's mm -hmm. but so it affected not only cognitive yeah. but your Absolutely. mobility also yeah so it became apparent to us that two a little over two years ago we were having this conversation and she was fully present and able to make the, the decision that this was the time to put our life care contract into into place and for her to move to yeah. the um, uh, assisted memory living yeah. memory care floor. So that move took place uh, two, well, two years ago, this coming June 2nd, mm -hmm. she moved there and uh, and received just great care. And, and it was so close. So even though she was there and I was here, we were literally only three minutes apart from each other. I just mm -hmm. put her down, walk a few feet, another elevator. So I was able to see her morning and afternoon and tuck her in at night and yet still come back and have a life of my own. Right. And um, she <clears throat> died. Her her disease progressed and uh, she finally went on hospice care last uh, early December and then died on June 15th. So I have been widowed now for a little over four months. February, March, April, May, and I and and so one of the things I want to say is that living here in this community, the relationships that I had developed here in the community were have been so strong that I have felt uh, uh, enormous support and love, yeah. and uh, and so I've never felt I've never felt lonely, or yeah. I've never felt alone. Right. Or lonely, even in throughout mm -hmm. this uh, process of, um, you know, say goodbye. I've had the family support from outside, and that's been strong support, but every, every bit as significant, if not more so for me, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. community relationships, the relationships yeah. that have developed. Yeah. With, and, you know, when you say new, that, new Sonia, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So often when one spouse dies, the other one will pass away fairly quickly due to, and a lot of it is depression and loneliness and isolation. And it's like, they give up on living and you're not, I don't even hear any of that is oh, as difficult as it's been to lose her, sad, but you've but, been able to, you know, be uh, in, in a situation where you're supported and that's so valuable and important. Yeah. Well, Kendall, I am so sorry for your loss, but I still want to talk to you a little bit about what is life at Skyline? What is it like when you wake up every day? So will you join me in our next segment? Look forward to. All right. Kendall and I, we will be right back right after this. We at Answers for Elders, thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.